Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 13 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, 2nd Edition. So in this video, we're going to take our first look at predicted probabilities for uh, binary outcome regression models. So predicted probabilities is a way to interpret coefficients for both logit and probit models. Uh, so in the previous video, we looked at odds ratio. We can just use that with logit. Predicted probabilities, we can use it for logit or probit, or and probit, depending on what, <laughs> what you're doing. Um, with predicted probabilities, there's a bunch of different versions of them we can look at. There's individual, there's group, there's average, there's change in predicted probabilities. And then my favorite, predicted probability plots or plotting predicted probabilities. Um, one word about the, the name here. So it's called predicted probabilities because the probabilities that are calculated are based on our model, which is predicting effects, right? Or like expected effects. Um, so that, that's where the terminology comes from. And so we should, well, I include this in the in in the chapter, but we we should also, you know, be specific that we're talking about predicted probabilities, not the probability of this happening. Okay, so um, I used to torture my students, um, not on purpose, but <laughs> just by fact about how to uh, do predicted probabilities. Um, there is a way to do it in R that's so much simpler than I used to do it. Uh, it feels so bad um, for my students, but but I don't know. We're, we're going to chalk it up to a learning experience for, for everyone. Um, in this video, we're going to look quickly at doing individual predicted probabilities and then what I call grouped predictor probabilities. Okay, so we, we, we are going to look at the predicted probability of a of someone um, so someone here based on the data is a respondent to the survey the Scottish uh, social attitude survey um, the predictive probability of someone voting yes in the 2014 Scottish independence uh, referendum and we're going to do it for a particular combination of characteristics okay so so let's talk about it in when we get to the code so we're going to use a function from the GG effects package. So we're going to load that package. So library GG effects. All right. Um, we get yelled at. And then the function we're going to use is GG predict. Okay. Our model. So this is goes back to uh, the first video in this. Uh, chapter where we saved the uh, logit regression results as model.logit. This will work for probit. Okay. So we do model logit, comma, and then we're going to do terms equals, sorry, I'm going to do space there, equals quote Scott and then a space square bracket seven close square bracket. So this is specifying um, someone, a respondent who responded seven on Scott, which is strength of Scottish identity. A seven is someone with the strongest Scottish identity. Okay. And then we're going to include the condition or the other values of so I'm gonna we'll see this here so we're gonna include this condition equals and then use our C function concatenate we're gonna do trust equals one comma age equals 50 all right so what this what this is gonna give us this is like the combination you know what is the predicted probability of voting yes based on the combination of these variables. So it's when Scott equals seven, trust equals one, where trust equal one means the person, the respondent says, um, you can never trust the British government to do what's right or to do what's in the people's interest. And then for someone who's 50 years old, 
All right, and again, these are all based on our models, thus the predicted. All right, so we're going to highlight this and run that. Okay, so this is what we're looking at here. We get we get the confidence intervals, but wait, wait, let's not worry about that. Um, what we can say is how do we interpret this? So 0.54, right? So that's the predictive probability. So for a 50 year old respondent who says you can never trust the British government and has the strongest Scottish identity, the predictive probability of voting yes in um, the 2014 Scottish independence referendum is 0.54 or 54%. Okay, so, so that's how you interpret that um, since in this situation um, even though we have Scott here we can move these around and we're, we're gonna get the same value because they're they're individual types so when I um, do this you know I okay so let me step back when I talk about this in class what I do generally is say um, it's a good idea if we're gonna look at this to look at say one extreme of values versus another extreme of values so we might do, um, I'm going to change this a little, I'm going to change age to say 18. So this is people say, um, who might be the most likely to vote yes, right? So people with the strongest Scottish identity say you can never trust the British government and they're younger. Um, let's see if we, we change to 18, right? So that increased the predicted probability a great deal. Right now it's 0.73. So an 18 year old who says you can never trust the British government has the strongest Scottish identity. The predicted probability of voting yes is 0.73 or 73%. Um, and then what I, and then, and then I would say, okay, now let's compare it to the sort of other side of this. All right. So people at the weakest people say you can, uh, people who say you can always trust the British government. And then I forget what it goes up to, but let's, uh, let's do 80. All right. So let's look at that combination. All right. So their predicted probability is 0 0.02. So an 80 year old who has the weakest Scottish identity um, says you can always trust the British government. Uh, their predicted probability of voting yes is 0 0.02. Okay. Or what does that work out to? two <laughs> percent sounds pretty unlikely um you know the the issue with individual predictor probabilities or even like group predictor probabilities um is that they're they're so specific right we can imagine a whole bunch of combinations of this but what we want when we're doing interpretations is we want like the big picture right like what does this affect what is this telling us so th that's one of the problems with doing with doing individual predictive probabilities um, or even grouped, and that's, and that's one of the reasons why I like like doing the plotting. Um, let's briefly look at grouped, and grouped is just it's it's just a version of the individual predictive probabilities. Um, what we're going to do is look at two values of trust and keep um, Scott and age at their means. All right, so we use the same function, ggpredict, and then model.logit. We're going to do terms equals, quote, trust space, square bracket one, comma, four, cl close square bracket. And then we're not going to include anything else, but because by default, uh, the ggpredict function will keep the other variables at their means. Okay, so again, I call this groups. I don't even know if that's the right term, but um, so it's like people, you know, okay, let me let me back up. So we see here, see it says adjusted for. So this is the mean values for Scott and age. So, um, you know, we, we, we can interpret this as um, when Scottish identity and age are at their means, um, for someone who says you can never trust the British government, the predicted probability of voting yes is 0.39 or 39%. And then um, 
for someone says you can always trust the British government, the predicted probability of, predicted probability of voting yes is 0.15 or 15%. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, in the next one, we're going to look at plotting predicted probabilities, which I think is, is, is great. I love it. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.